The Grim Tale of Grace Macabre Chapter 6 Grace washed Ian's blood off her hands. She watched the crimson-tinted water swirl around the bowl of the sink and bleed through the chrome grate at the bottom. She was no longer crying, but she was shaking, making her hands appear to be stricken with palsy. It seemed to take an eternity, but she finally was able to wash away the blood. She shut off the water and grabbed a handful of paper towels from the dispenser bolted to the wall. She looked up into the mirror and saw that Sarah was standing behind her. She seemed somber, concerned. Grace was too shaken and emotionally withdrawn to be startled by Sarah's sudden appearance. Ian is going to live, Sarah said. She reached up with her right hand and adjusted her horn-rimmed glasses. It will be close. He's in bad shape because the bullet nicked his lung, but he will live. Grace turned to face Sarah. She took a steadying breath and a weak attempt to gain control of her shaking. Oh, I hope so, she said. How do, you, how do you know? Did, did you speak with the paramedics? Sarah ignored her question. You need to make sure you are there for him, Grace. What he did for you was a sign of unconditional love. But I don't love him, Grace heard herself say. She cringed at the callousness of the statement. The sharp barb of shame stabbed her heart. It wasn't just a romantic love that made him risk his life for you and the others, Grace, Sarah said. He was acting selflessly, heroically. But why would he try to be a hero and save those kids? Grace asked. I saw the look in their eyes. Sarah, not, not even one of them would have done the same for him. They all had cold eager looks on their faces. They wanted to watch him die. It was awful. Sarah took a couple steps closer and gently touched Grace's shoulder. Our culture used to celebrate heroic acts, but now we celebrate vanity and vice. And because of that, we have slipped into depravity. Those kids the ones who wanted to watch him die, they're, they're so emotionally broken that they think brokenness is normal. They didn't care that he risked his life for them, Grace said. You're right, Grace. Most of these kids will not be able to see what he did for them, but you can see it, the importance of it, don't you? The burden and power of self-sacrifice and... I think you also know deep down that you survived today because you are special, that you have a secret destiny. Grace's mind had crept back to the image of the kids shuffling against each other in their attempt to watch Ian die. She heard Sarah's last statement, but it had not fully registered. Sarah gently shook her to bring her back to the here and now, her intent to try and drive home her point. But before she could, the bathroom door was pushed open and Nephi swept into the room. She stopped short when she saw Sarah. She looked surprised to see her standing so close to Grace. Sarah let a surprisingly cold stare linger a moment on Nephi, then turned her attention back on Grace, who had become more focused. Nephi was the first to speak. I didn't realize I was interrupting anything. I'm sorry. I just wanted to check on you and see if you were okay. Grace cleared her throat and said, We... we were just talking. Sarah's 
trying to comfort me a little, I guess. Nephi seemed to glow as if she were swathed in an aura of vibrant radiance. Even in the harsh fluorescent glow of the restroom, she appeared to have just stepped from the painting of some Renaissance master painter. Grace felt a sense of excitement swell up just to be in her presence, let alone to have Nephi speak to her. Nephi turned a suspicious gaze upon Sarah. I'm Nephi, she said. You look familiar. Have we ever met? Sarah squeezed Grace's shoulder as if in subtle warning as she turned to face Nephi. Sarah, she replied. Her look was hard, cold. I've seen you and your friends around. There are a lot of rumors as to where you all came from. Nephi smiled. It was radiant in its confidence, glorious in its perfection. Her teeth gleamed. Her skin shone unblemished. Her eyes sparkled with inner fire. Really, she said. Her tone was sarcastically playful. Isn't that fun? Then she turned her attention to Grace, effectively dismissing Sarah. Are you going to be okay? Grace nervously shrugged her shoulders. I, I, I think so. I'm, I'm just... After what seemed to Grace to be an endless moment in which she unsuccessfully searched for the correct word, Nephi reached into her pocket and produced a slip of paper. She handed it to Grace. This is my cell number. If there's anything I can do, give me a call. Grace was pulled even further from her despair at the thought of having the private number to one of the runaways. Thanks, she said. Her voice was still shaky, but much less so than just a few moments before. I really appreciate that. Nephi's smile was enchanting. Great. I'll make sure to keep my phone close. With that, she turned and stepped back into the hallway. Her exit left a discernible void in the room. An awkward moment passed before Sarah asked, Do you know her? Grace shook her head. No, but I want to. That was so nice of her. Sarah knowingly nodded. Yes, she said. I suppose it seemed that way to you just now. It was clear that Sarah distrusted Nephi. What do you mean? Grace asked. It's difficult to know if people are real nowadays, Grace. You never know if they are truly what they seem to be. Maybe, Grace replied with a shrug. But she and Ari helped save us out there in the lunchroom. If it hadn't been for them, Justin could have killed a lot of people. Sarah seemed disappointed. I can't disagree with that. But remember that it was Ian who actually put his life on the line for everyone. There was a knock on the door, and Officer Jenkins called out to her. Miss McCobb, are you in there? Y- yes, Grace called out nervously. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just finishing up. I need to get your statement while the events are fresh on your mind. I'll, I'll be right there, Grace said, turning to Sarah. I won't forget what Ian did, Sarah. Grace ran her fingers through her strawberry blonde hair in a weak attempt to make it look less disheveled. I don't know what you mean about me having a secret destiny, but it was Ari who tackled Justin, stopping him from killing us all. You should have seen him. He was amazing. Grace took a deep, calming breath and pushed through the door and into the hall, leaving Sarah standing alone.